Hi everyone, welcome back to RC Pi. Now today we're going to be having a look at painting up a polycarbonate or Lexan body shell. Um, again, I don't claim to be any sort of expert. I've done a few and I've got some fairly nice results. So I thought I'd share with you what I do and my thoughts and a few new ideas that I've had going into doing this one. So obviously the first thing that you have to do is decide what you're going to paint. So I decided that going for a van would be a good idea. So I did buy a couple of different body shells and have a look at those and have a look at what I might put them on and then just have that thought in my mind. Um, leading to the next step which was heading out to the model shop. And I had a look at the paints and I saw these three colours that I really really liked. Now, I didn't really know what I was going to do with them, but I just thought, they're nice, and they would work together. They're the right sort of complementary colours, I could do something nice with those. So I bought those, that's a pearl purple, candy ice blue, and a candy ice magenta. And I also bought a silver, a starburst silver a white and black, but I also had some more black already. Seems like a lot you might think, but makes sense to me that you're gonna do your main colors, you're then gonna back those with silver to give them that real shine, that real sparkle. Then you're gonna back it with white to make sure that it's really light behind it and it's going to reflect the light really well and then back with black finally just to give you that nicer interior and to block as much light as possible from coming straight through. It'll mean that when you look under the car it's not going to look horrific. So next step was to take a photo of the body shell so this is a Charisma Scale Adventure um, Prairie Wolf body. Took that photo on a fairly neutral background, got it onto my laptop, and then I can start messing about. I use Critter, it's a fantastic program. And then took a photo of my three main colors and put those on the screen alongside the van so that I could use my dropper to get colours from there just for the basics. Now I know because they're metallics you're not going to get the perfect representation but it's just to give you that idea. So I did that and then started trying blocking out some colours to try different designs. And you soon realise in things that do work or don't work. So I went, I went from my pretty much my first design um, though it's not quite right came up with another one quite liked the lines on it but the colourways weren't it just wasn't quite right so I started playing around with those swapping them round how's it gonna work which is gonna be the best just playing with them and playing with them until I decided on one that I thought worked very well. Now this was what I settled on but again as you're painting you're still thinking I decided to get rid of these lines on the roof be a bit too busy and a couple of other things changed slightly but that was the way that I very easily came up with a colour scheme. Now you don't need great Photoshop skills or whatever to do this just a little bit of time and you can come up with your own ideas and just get a feeling whether it works or whether it totally doesn't. You'll soon get a handle on that and see what you want to progress with. And then it's on to masking, painting and getting on with it. Now the first stage of doing the painting is definitely my least favourite. I cannot stand it and that's doing the window masks. So with just about everybody, you will get 
a set of wind no mask stickers that you stick on the inside assuming you are painting it in the normal way on the inside um, but the wind no masks are a notoriously hard to get in especially if you've got big hands trying to get inside that body but b they're never quite the right size so on any given window there'll always be the ridges around the outside which are kind of those either the either the molded in the metal or more likely the the rubber that goes around the rubber seals that go around each pane of glass so i want to i want to paint those a different color so i put the window masks on and then masking tape all around i know i'm showing you on the outside there but masking tape all around the outside of each window just leaving that gap so you can see the gap there and when it's something like this with loads of windows we've got loads to do here just leaving that little gap so that I can spray it spray it black and I will have that trim around each window so it's a bit of a pain uses loads of masking tape um, I do use sheets of polythene or sometimes even paper because you don't want to stick masking tape over everything so just masking tape around the detail and then polythene sheet over the rest of it making sure that you curl that over the edges around your wheel arches around everywhere else so that it's not going to get kind of blow back inside when you're spraying it's not going to find its way in the air and inside your masking um, I've also done the door handles left those so those will get a bit of black um, these air intakes on the grill on the grill on the bonnet or the hood if you like um, now I did do this area for the grill leaving that black but I've now realized with the molded piece that you get with it there's actually there aren't any gaps in there it's not a proper grill so it didn't really matter but whatever no big deal now one thing I would say is before you start any of your painting do make all your holes that you're going to be using for mounting things like this grill you know that's mounted there with eight pins that go through and then it's got mounts on the inside so do those first because it's easier to mark it when the body is clear you can hold that up against where you want and either make a hole straight away or just use a sharpie or something and and just do dots mark dots through the clear shell same I've got a ladder that's going to go on the back here so I've already marked and drilled that and the thing I was waiting for was a roof rack so I got that in place marked and drilled the six holes for mounting that so if you don't do it when your body's still clear you're going to have a bit of a pain you could still do it you could draw around those and then go in the centers but it's not as easy so do those generally put a bit of tape on the outside you only need a little bit over each of those holes so that when you do come to spraying again if there's anything outside it's not going to go in or when you're spraying from the inside any spray that comes through if the protective film has lifted a little bit you don't want that leaching into everything so it's less likely if this is stuck down because it's going to hold your protective film in place so that's all your prep for the first stage for your first detailing before we get on to the fun bit of masking out your patterns for your colours this is the first boring section but important if you want your, your new polycarbonate body to look how you intended so the windows are done that black outline is all painted unfortunately it's not gone quite to plan as things often don't when you're rushing a bit or you're just busy doing other things at the same time um, I've had a bit of paint bleed 
under the masking tape. Now this was a new masking tape that I got and I don't know whether to blame that or whether to blame user error, it's probably a bit of both. I don't think it's the best tape, um, but I think part of the problem is that I hadn't pressed it down fully with my nail. Um, what I should have done and what I would advise for anybody, if you've got new tape, do a test piece, use one of your cutout wheel arches, whatever. Um, this is different tapes that I've got. Um, and you can see whether you're getting a clean edge, whether it's what you want. Now, if I'd done that first and done it in the same way as I'd done the body, I would have realized that I'd messed up and would have redone it a bit better, or at least pressed it down more and made sure that that worked. But alas, too late for that. So I have salvaged it a bit. Um, it's not the best, but I think we'll get away with it. So the next step was the, the masking of the other colors. Now, as you can see from my, from my monitor here, is that bright enough? Um, this was the, the color scheme that I decided on, more or less, not going with the stripes on the roof, but I did various color schemes using those, using those colors, which I photoed the, the lids, then I could sample colors off those. Um, an easy way of trying different color schemes. So that's all masked off now so that I can do the front main color. Um, the lines that are going to be going through this design are going to stay on and then just that back section will peel off. I can do that and then the color for the, the sort of highlights, that third color. So I'm going to go and give that a spray and fingers crossed it's going to go a bit better than the black did. Well, here's the makeshift winter spray booth with the fan heater on, uh, hair dryer there for in between coats. Uh, fan heater is indirect, so it's just raising the ambient temperature a bit, and then we've just got the body propped up. So I'm just doing some very, very light coats in between each light coat, just giving it a gentle go with the hair dryer just to cure that coat a little bit and then a bit more spray. So anyone that says you can't spray in the cold, yeah, get out of here. That's the first layer of paint done, first color. Um, now it looks fairly opaque from the outside, but once we, once we turn this over and have a look from the inside, um, you'll see that it's really not that thick. And this is a full can, but as you can see, can see through it fairly well. Uh, now don't worry about that because a lot of this is going to be caught up in the, the backing colours that we use and we are going to put more coats on anyway. <laughs> 